Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast with Benji Nice. And this is our Bora Hansgrohe 2021 preview. I thank the team for the continuity of their name. Since 2017, it has not changed. It makes it very easy for simple-minded folk like me who do not deal like well you. with the changing world. Yes. Uh, I usually operate Benji on a two-year trailing name basis. So whatever your <laughs> team's name was two years before, I'll then call you that. So, for example, I just gotten used to Mitch and Scott, and that's now what I'll call them. I last year I still called them Orica Greenage, and it just takes me a while to get used to it. It's not my fault. Um, I guess do you, you find it a bit easier, or are you? Um, I guess you're used to Bingoel, Wingold, Broxells, Wallany sort of operations. <laughs> um, well, I think that it's even worse for me sometimes because. I've caught myself calling Yumbo Lotto and L at the start of this season and <laughs> Bahrain McLaren or Bahrain. Just call Victoria's them Belkin, mate. Marina, so. Belkin. Yeah. <laughs> Rabobank. <laughs> the Rabobank pro cycling team. It's all the same staff, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's enough uh, ribaldry for one week. Let's get into this preview. Review the 2020 season first, then transfers, then picking, although they've already half-picked some of their squads, which will make it easy for us, for the classics, the cobbles, cobble classics rather, the Ardennes, uh, Milano San Roma kind of sits on its own, and then obviously the Grand Tours as well as maybe Lombardia. Uh, but some breaking news, Benji, that's not so breaking, or did it come out today? I'm not sure if you've read an article about it. I just got texted about it that apparently Peter Sagan has tested positive for coronavirus. And I believe uh, that was, he's in quarantine and it was during his Gran Canaria training camp. I know he was in Monaco beforehand where he was training in the snow. I remember seeing on Instagram, but yeah, he's got test positive for COVID. Um, Not a great time to test positive for it, I guess. It's especially for someone like him, Benji, because What's his normal season look like? It's it's uh, sort of on loop or it's the classics, right? As well as being the big dog for San Remo. Yeah, sometimes he skips over on Omloop and Kuna, but I recall him saying that he wouldn't this year. And obviously after that, we go to Strade. Then we've got Milano San Remo, the classics, sometimes a few races in between. I think Tereno's one he, he usually does. So the coming weeks are going to be pretty vital for his preparation and Losing that is pretty uh, pretty sad. And also his brother as well, I think, was tested positive because they were training together. So, yeah, that's also a huge loss for the team, you guys again. All in all, like, yeah, I think that it's going to matter for his preseason. But I hope it doesn't for him. But we've seen before that regarding Chicone last year, that it can be pretty terrifying to have that just before your season is starting off. And in Gavidia, it seemed to affect Gavidia's consistency as well. And I know when we spoke to Yana Seal, even if you're not really particularly symptomatic, I think the Astana policy was, well, if you've tested positive, you're not training regardless because, yeah. you know, we, we don't know how that, it can affect you and, and your lungs, et cetera. So they, they don't have their riders training, even if they're asymptomatic. Um, so maybe Bora might have something similar in place as well, which would mean, yeah, he's taking two weeks completely off training and maybe another a week, say he's fine, then that's another week of easier training. That's three full weeks. That's taking us to the end of February, uh, which, yep. if you don't know, is a shorter month than the other months. So, yeah, this could actually affect the start of his season. But anyway, on to their review of 2020, their 2020 season, Bora Hansgrohe. It's, it's hard for me... I don't know. I think it's just par Benji, but I don't think they achieved a lot of their goals, but then they, they got some good results from riders they didn't expect. So it's 21 wins overall. And there was oh, seven, 10 of them at world tour level. That's very good. And four grand tour stage wins. But the thing is, I think Bora, We've heard of other teams like Lotto and Co. They they had four or five or more Grand Tour stage wins. Education First had quite a few Grand Tour stage wins. So yeah, I think it's I think it's about par. And they also had some bad luck, particularly Emmanuel Buchmann crashing on the same day that Kreuzweich and Primoz Roglic crashed in the Criterium de Dauphiné stage four. I think that really affected Buchmann, who I was quite high on for the Tour de France to be in top five at least. And I had him for the podium. 
And so that wasn't their fault. But some of the, the big wins, Benji, Paranese GC, the Schachman, including a stage, uh, Sibiu Tour, every, <laughs> it's not the biggest race, but they cleaned it up, <laughs> coming out of lockdown. Dauphiné stage four, magic win from Kemna, who'd come there from Sunweb after almost taking three months off cycling. Uh, he'd taken a break, Dumoulin style from cycling, came roaring back, won that Dauphiné stage. Then Ackerman, two, first two stages at Torreno. One of them was a very spicy win on the right-hand side, I think, of Gavidia. Stage 16 tour, Kemner, we all remember that one. Giro stage, again, very exciting too. And then two Vuelta stages, Ackerman. But no, no top fives in GC anywhere in the Grand Tours. And Groschart and ninth at the Vuelta was, I think, the best they had, or maybe Michael or Conrad. So how, how do you rate it, Benji? I think it's on par. And I think it uh, indeed comes down to injuries a lot. You've got, like you mentioned, the injury of Buchmann for the tour, but one that's also not really um, on the radar for many people is the injury that Shockman had. We had a Lombardia uh, yes. where he crashed in one of the final kilometers because of a car who, um, yeah, who took a turn and wasn't supposed to be on the on the parkour, but unfortunately was. And I think he broke his collarbone, but I'm not 100 percent sure about. Yes. If that's the actual injury he had, okay. And after that, yeah, he was off to the tour with that collarbone. You can't expect a man to win many races with a broken collarbone, even though I'm super surprised that he even made it through the Tour de France like he did. Because, like, yeah, a lot of people that have a broken collarbone are not really supposed to be riding their bikes for uh, quite a bunch of time, but he decided to do it and... He was yeah, working. Yeah, he no, wasn't just like, he wasn't just like hanging yeah. on either. He wasn't like in group header each day. He was working on the flats for Sagan, trying to at the start of stages, if you remember, in the green jersey battle. Yep. He was going in the break, helping Kamner, like attacking, and then Martinez had to chase him down. That didn't work out. Oh, yeah. But as well, that was, that was Shackman going up the road that made that great move for Bora. Um, so yeah, he was still working. Crazy good tour for him given that injury. I guess Benji, he was lucky. Like, I thought he shouldn't have won the Pyrenees GC personally because I don't think he should have been given the same time after yeah. the crash because it was within his control despite being in the last three kilometres. But swings and roundabouts, um, I guess. So I think it's it, it's fair that they've got a, probably a GC, World Tour GC for a one-week race somewhere there. What about Ackerman, Benji? We'll get to Sagan in a second. But what about Ackerman? Two Grand Tour stage wins, Vuelta, and one other world... No, sorry, and three other world tour wins, Torreno and a UAE tour. But I feel like no no one has him in their top tier of sprinters. I think that's clearly DeMar, Bennett, and Ewan. What, do, you, do you think those results, those five world tour wins, two Grand Tour stage wins are not really as good as they look on paper? I think that's true. Uh, we were pretty critical on him as well last season. I think the season before it was that year where he basically smashed onto the scene um, when he won two or three stages in the Giro. And we expect that to continue in that way. He was beating Ewan in those kind of sprints. Yep. Looking at it in 2020, he tried to start off the season, I think, in Playa de Palma or something. And he lost a sprint there to Moschetti. So the season didn't start off too well. He ended up winning Almeria which is basically a similar parkour this year. I think it was a hill stage in the past, but they made it somewhat flat recently. And that was not against the biggest competition. The man went to uh, Tireno eventually, while also like won a, a stage in Sibiu Tour, but let's be real, no one big was there really. It was Tireno Grosu. was the competition of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Grosu. Grosu. <laughs> <laughs> so uh Akerman went to uh Tireno and in Tireno he um well he started sprinting against Melir and Gaviria and very weak Gaviria very weak sprint top. field yeah Melir you could say that he's moving up the standards once again during the year but I don't put Melir next to the big guns yet on on that sprinting list and Akerman has just no real consistency at the moment of winning these top sprints and we saw that at the start of La Vuelta at stage nine, he ended up pushing through. And I think he only won the first stage he did because Bennett got demoted or... Yes, that's correct. Uh, yeah, I recall that. So he eventually on, won the last one as well. Yeah. Yeah. So on the on the road, I mean, Bennett deserved to be uh, DQ'd, but what Bennett did to be DQ'd didn't cause Ackerman to come second. Ackerman still came second to Bennett because Bennett beat him pretty much fair and square. Um, 
I guess I can, uh, Bennett's DQ was good for something with Lapinch down earlier, yeah, about a kilometre before. So it really, in reality, Ackerman still lost that sprint to, to Bennett, and I think pretty easily. I remember Bennett posting up uh, pretty comfy for that win too. And then stage 18, last Grand Tour stage of the season, he did win it, so you've got to give him credit there. He beat Bennett and Cantor, but still not as strong, I don't think, as the Tour de France sprint field. And yep. his name, Benji, is Pascal I am going to be the lead out man for the other sprinters, Ackerman. He loves to go way too early. That's the problem. And maybe I don't know if that's his fault. I mean, some people are like, oh, why do they go so early? Why is the sprinter going so early? Someone the other day, like, why is Nitzol, why is Nitzolo and Bulani, Bulani in Etoile de Bessege stage or two? Why are they jumping so early? It's like, well, they, they, their last lead out man dropped them off at 225. Uh, so they yep. either decelerate to try and find a wheel. And then that comes with all sorts of problems and you're still probably going to lose or you just hope you have the legs and you're better than everyone on the day and you maybe cut off half of the side of the road you're on. Um, I think that's not always the case with Ackerman. I think he does actually get a bit twitchy and jumps early. You see Ewan, even without a train, he'll like pop up out of nowhere. And the problem, Benji, is all these guys, I mean, everyone memes about me hating on Bennett. The reality is they're all... They all can beat each other on their day. Damar, Ewan, Bennett, Ackerman, um, Wap Van Aert. They can Grossu. all... Grosso. Even like someone like Merlier. And there's so many good sprints on their day. Nizzolo, sorry, I should have said Nizzolo as well. And Matthew van der Poel. If, they make a mis- if everyone makes a mistake or you make a mistake, you're not beating them. Uh, because the level is so close. There's not someone like Kittle who... Like Kittle was a joke. Kittle in like 2015, 16, Benji would literally kick at 225 in Grand Tour sprints and then start posting up with 30 meters to go with four bike lengths. It was comical how good he was. Abu Dhabi and <laughs> as well, it was just a joke. But then, 2010 then, Cavendish. Like, yeah, 2010 Cavendish similar. similar, you know, like, and we don't have the, that sort of difference between the top guys anymore. So, that's the problem with Ackerman. It's Borhans Grove fans listening. You know it as well. Everyone comments on it. I'm not the first person to mention this. And I think that feeds into some of these signings, Benji, that I want to talk about. So obviously, Jempi Drucker, who you called washed, has gone out the door. Um, but they brought in one guy who I clearly see as maybe helping that lead out train. And maybe you think differently. Niels Pollitt, the German from ISU, second in Roubaix a couple of years ago. If I'm not mistaken, um, in 2019, what? Why do you think they Correct. signed him? Is it for train duties or is it to shore up the classic squad? I think both really fits because you've got a rider that can also do proper leadouts, as in he's he's got an engine like mad. He can also have a bit of a sprint. So worst case scenario, if he comes into a group where he has to be the last leadout man because something happened to the other riders. They were dropped or something in a pretty difficult race. Let's say Sigan and him were in the first group and Hindu Evelgem. Then Niels Pollitt can still do a job and bring Hindu Evelgem perhaps to the likes of Peter Sigan in a sprint. We'll talk about Sigan later, I guess. Um, Niels Pollitt, nothing in cobbles. He proved himself in that 2019 Roubaix. I had a bet on him that day. Still proud of that. But um, unfortunately, he didn't win. Uh, in the end, I think that he's going to be a good addition for the cobble team if his form is more like 2019 than 2020 in 2020 it wasn't it wasn't up to standards and yeah i expected more from him i'm giving him a pass and i hope that he why because he was on his rough startup nation okay i think that, 19, that's I think, kind of true yeah i think you have to give him a pass because at katusha which was a better team i know they're kind of sent like a lot of crossover with the riders between the mm-hmm. two but second at Roubaix 2018 he was seventh at Roubaix fifth at Flanders in 2019 he's only 26 2027 in a couple of months I, I just I'm giving you a pass maybe that's I'm missing something but I'm just because of the team I kind of agree to be honest yeah, yeah. the thing like about it th- is that do you think he's sorry, a legit yeah. class like so you think he's a legit top classics guy I think he can be. Um, I think that Roubaix just fits him more because he's not amazing at the hills, but he's also not terrible at that. I think Deutschland Tour a few years ago, 
stuff like that. Olani, he also had a, a good stage a few years ago. So he can definitely do hills. And I believe that he's going to be pretty decent throughout the season. I think that Bora is just a very perfect team for him. Yeah. And I think he fits in that group. I recall an article that I read that some higher ups at Bora said that he's not necessarily having to work for Sagan in the cobble races, that they're going to see who is the better leader in those races. And that it's also a bit to put some pressure on Sagan to, yeah, to kind of perform at, at top levels again. And I think that all it is a good addition to the team. It's fair and square. I think it's a good signing. I think after 20, 2020, his money that he requires is going to be less than after 2019, most likely. So yeah. I think it's a very good signing. I think it's a great signing. I think on Bora with Austin Co. If Sagan's there as well, I think it's just, I think he's, he could win. That's, we'll maybe wait for our hot takes. Uh, but that's one of our, my favorite incoming transfers. They've also out the door is Rafael Maika. He's been there for quite a while or since Tinkoff days. Where it came across from Tinkoff with Sagan and co. He's gone to UAE Team Emirates. We'll talk about that on the, more on the UAE Team Emirates preview. Oscar Gatto, I think, might have retired. Joe McCarthy, unfortunately, blew out his knee in that crash in the Vuelta. So he's not on a team at the moment. He's recuperating. Best wishes to him. I'd like to, hopefully, I can, we'll see him back in World Tour at the end of this year. That was a very, very serious injury that he suffered on his knee. Pavel Polanski, Polish, uh, is he a veteran? Yeah, he was 30. Um, yes. He's retired. I think he retired relatively early at 30 years old. Um, and the other big one is Mulberger Benji. So I'd say they're two best. Well, so they're two best climbers are out the door, Mulberger and Micah. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure that was like a conscious decision from them. Or do you think they're happy to have Kelderman in? Like, why, why do you think Micah and Mulberger are gone? Because I don't think Mulberger went for money. Was it for opportunity and Micah for money? I think Mulberger went went for opportunity to Movistar, although they've got a lot of climbers there. I do believe that they've got a bit of space when it comes to the one week races, while yeah. in Bora they've got so many layers to this Shockman. that they can send so many riders to one week races. Yeah, Shockman, for example, is not necessarily a GC rider for Grand Tours, but the man can do one week races, and that's exactly what Mulberger wants to extend this his career into for a tiny bit here before he perhaps goes into further things. Micah. I believe they're not going to miss him at all. I don't me think too, Micah too. is adding much to Bora. And the reason for that is, sorry, Polish fans, I love Micah, don't get me wrong. But the moment Micah switched to GC-centered views, he started not giving the teams their money's worth because the man can literally go into breakaways and win four stages in a Grand Tour if he even tried that at the moment, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but... Because he focuses on GCs instead and, and gets a top 10 in GC, that's not worth as much for me, I would say. I don't know for whether the financial prices for that are better, but I think recognition for full stage wins is better than a top 10. So uh, I think that at UAE, hopefully, they find a way to either use him as a domestique or to have him attack again, because those are the roles I see Micah best in and not as a GC leader. Yeah, well, I I don't actually ever remember him working as a domestique, honestly. Maybe he did for Tinkoff back in. I don't remember. Was Contour when Contador was riding for them? I'm not, I I don't remember him doing a crazy, yeah, any, any domestique stuff too much. Definitely, he's been focusing on his own GC, twelfth at the Giro and a week Giro, and yeah, he just. He's just not up. He's just not a top GC guy, or even probably the second tier of GC guys. So it makes sense for him to go. And they've brought in, I think Mulberg is a bigger loss personally. But anyway, we spoke about that enough on the Movistar one. The, yeah. the big shame for them is they brought in Wilco Kelderman. He's gone from Sunweb. He's clearly unhappy there. I don't blame him either if I was him. And unfortunately, Bora Hansgrohe, you might have heard about this. They had that crash in the when they were training. And I think they got hit by a car that just went through uh, an intersection and hit them. This was near Lake Garda in Italy. I still don't know why. It's, it's unfortunate. I remember, I remember when something happening with, was it Sunweb Benji or yes. who, who was it with, with Degenkolb and he lost part of his finger or something. It actually took him out for a while. Uh, or Giant Alperson. 
Uh, with, Margil as well was involved yeah. in that and was like off the scene for quite a bit. And I think a bunch of writers on Sunweb were, were just not yeah at a top level for quite a while. And I think some even didn't reach their top level again. I don't know which writers all of them were, but Dinko was playing a big role and also Bargill. And like, yeah. yeah, honestly, like Kelderman is a writer that is so prone to bad luck the last two years. And it's kind of a bit sad because once he doesn't have that, he's got the capabilities of top tening a Grand Tour, if not top fiving them in some occasions. Well, Lou, this is what happened. And, and on that bad luck, he, I think he just got checked for concussion. Schillinger and R- Rudiger Selig also got hit by the car. And he thought he just had a concussion. And then he, he figured out that he'd broken something in his neck or something again. Um, and it was a more serious injury, if I'm recalling correctly. You might want to fact check me on that, Benji. I hate getting injuries wrong. But yeah, I remember from this, this is back in January. And so he's out for a while and we don't know exactly when he's going to be, going to be back. I'm not sure what his program was supposed to be. I think it was the tour uh, that he was targeting and Bookman yep. was going to the Giro. So that, that's good news in one sense. And he was going to do Amstel, Liège, Romandie. So he, he does have a few months, but geez. Bad luck follows him around, and he's he's still only 29. That being said, I wasn't a big fan of the signing, regardless. Um, I, I that, that was my view before the crash, and I just think the upside is with riders like Camner on GC. So I thought, why and why bring in Kelderman? I think they have to. I think they've promised Ackerman that he has to go to the tour. So I was like, well, just go Ackerman, Camner. And then stage hunt with whoever else, see how Kemner goes riding for his own GC, maybe give him one other rider. But anyway, the other riders they brought in, Frederick Vandal from Colo Quick, which is like a Danish Conti feeder team. I think Johan Price Pedersen came from that team as well. Um, so he's like a 19 year old Dane. I don't have much of a read of him. Giovanni Aliotti from cycling team Friuli. Seem to remember him being in the Baby Giro, Model One stage, done okay. Matthew Walls from EF Education First. He's got no real results of note except for beating Caden Groves in a baby Giro sprint in 2018. He's 22 years old. Don't really know what the plan is for him. Maybe just a sprint prospect. But the big signings which you've there's been just oh an exhausting amount of articles about are uh, uh, Benzli Hoff and Anton Palzer. They're two Germans. And <laughs> I know I don't blame Bora for signing them. Bora don't have to sign Biniam Garmai. But it is funny how like people are going. I mean, Bora are probably good at it. They got they got good staff. I, I really trust their system and think they're a pretty smart team. But yeah, Zvihoff, I think, was a mountain bike rider. And people are like, this is the most novel thing ever. A mountain bike rider coming over to uh to road cycling at 26. Like, well, <laughs> Rasmussen, full sang <laughs> saga, and like half the top guys rode mountain bike. I think even Egan Bernal rode mountain bike. Back in the day when he was like 15 years old, there's footage of it. Uh, probably not the levels Verhoff did. So apparently he's got crazy good numbers. A lot there's a lot of Germans talking to me all the time. Super fans from Bora saying Zehoff is they're legit. Zehoff's really really crazy strong, as well as apparently Anton Palzer, who's a ski mountaineer. At least that is different. But he's a ski. He was he was a professional like ski mountaineer, which is like climbing up crazy steep mountains and then skiing down as i understand it i don't know i'm allergic to snow but the germans were telling me <laughs> apparently his physiological values and vo2 max are fucking crazy and they pretty much just signed him they like saw him clip in on a stationary trainer and they're like, that's enough that's we, we don't need to see any more <laughs> because his vo2 is crazy but he's 27 zuhoff 26 bit of a mike wood scenario they're not they're not like 22, 21, but also they don't have thousands of thousands of thousands of thousands or maybe as we off does of Ks of on the road bike and the legs. So they might, they might, you know, they're still an eight to nine year window. What do you they make were, of those um, signings, Benji? I, uh, yeah, I, I don't have a, a good take on, on them as, as sporters because I don't watch too much else in cycling due to time at the moment. But I know that next to these two, I recall them also having interest in that rider that won the Zwift World Championships. Jason Osborne. Um, He'll be gone. Jason yeah. Osborne, the rower. And after the Olympics or something, he was perhaps going towards Bora was the rumor that I heard. But yeah, I don't know anything about that, but before. it would I'd be very surprised if he didn't end up at Bora after the, the, the rowing at the Olympics. 
Yeah, that's basically my take on that, to be honest. But overall, the transfers, I'm really curious what Aliotti will do. He was, yeah, he's a GC talent. And I like seeing those at the start of their career. I've got a, a natural attraction towards Italian GC riders with Nibli and such in the past, apparently. But yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to see what these youngsters can do. And that's something that I really like when it comes to Bora, because the ones they do have are kind of like Sunweb in that sense, that they're pretty good at forming those youngsters and bringing them forward and allowing them to get the opportunities they want. And I think one of the examples for that is the likes of Edis Helling in in the um, the Vuelta last year. But I think we can basically go over towards the teams. What's your... Uh, well, no, no, no. There's to... one more who we haven't okay. mentioned who you need to give me your input who? on. Jordi Mayos. Oh, okay. 22-year-old Belgian is... sprinter. Yeah, true. He was already good at the Tour de Bessage a few days ago. And he's a sprinter, but is also capable of riding a low-key cobble. I think it's somewhat related to David Decker in that sense, his rider type. And yeah, six, I think he can do similar three. things. I do believe that Decker is more talented. Sorry? Six foot three, 80 kilos, big guy. I think he's I think he's one to watch. Uh, I, I can't believe you're not hyping him up more, Benji. Already a top 10 at Passage. Was quite good sprinters yeah, there. I'm a fan, but I feel like we we need to like keep it calm for now. Like <laughs> we've been hyping up Belgian talent for quite a while now. We had Evenepoel, the the Sion Eiterbrugge's guy. So <laughs> quite a lot of riders that are uh, hitting the top of the field. So we got to be careful at picking the ones we're going to support for. One other note is that I think since. Oh, last year, Bora no longer. Uh, they st- I think Bora still have a development team, but they're no longer sponsoring or involved in the Bavarian development team that Marco Brenner was on. I, I, I don't. Get, I'm not entirely sure, but they definitely they put they ceased partnering with one of those junior teams in Germany. Altweiler Bayer, I think. Altweiler Bayer, and, yeah. Um, and now Brenner is, like- Brenner is sponsoring it. He's a name sponsor himself of that junior team at like 20 years old, which I love. <laughs> and like the, the logo is a goat and the, you know, saying Ziga. And yeah, I just love it. Brenner, Brenner is one of my favorite writers. <laughs> yeah, I think that regarding the feeder teams here as well, with that team, Otto Weider, Bayer, they've got quite a few riders that came from them team already that are bringing forward. They're also kind of using the transfers in a similar way that Sunweb is. Like Sunweb is, for example, getting riders that are talented, stocking them into the development team until they grow good enough to become part of the World Tour team. And I think they're doing that similarly. With the rider I just mentioned, uh, Sion Eiterbrooks, that guy is a pretty good Belgian talent, was doing even the pool kind of stuff in his in his youth races in Belgium and as a consequence for assigned him and he's now at Ottoweder Bayern but basically their communication team is the entire communication team of Bora so it's basically part of the team at this point so yeah that that's always awesome to see young development teams surrounding a Walter team to try and feed youngsters towards it and I hope that keeps bringing young talent towards our teams as well let's move on now to the Cobble Classics or the Classics team I'm going to be optimistic. This is the way I like to do things is, yeah, to try and be optimistic. And uh, I'm going to assume Slagan is fine and is ready for the races he needs to be ready for. And Kelderman is fine. Uh, that's the way I'm going to approach this. Cobbled classics. I think Niels Pollitt, obviously, first on the team sheet. In my view, I think he's probably even better than Slagan right now. Sagan, depending on the ones he wants to go to, he probably won't go to all of them. Um, Postel, Perstelberger, Daniel Oss, Jordi Maus, Martin Lass, maybe, Burkhardt, Bodnar, and Ackerman for Kerner, and maybe uh, another one, but probably not Tour of Flanders, etc. Who am I missing, Benji? Am I missing anyone or have I put in someone that doesn't deserve to be there? I think those are definitely names that fit in it. I'm also curious what a Patrick Gumper would do on those kind of terrains. I think he got 80 or something last year on um, on Kuna. So it's not amazing, but he's a pretty young rider and I'm kind of looking forward to see what he can do. He's also a bit of a low-key sprinter with some cobble strength. So all in all, they've got quite a strengthy team, I think, for... For the cobbles, and I think with the addition of Paulet, they're definitely better than last year. 
And yeah. it doesn't all come down to Sagan from this point onwards for the team. Yeah. They've got multiple riders. And it also makes so that Sagan is not as isolated in situations as he yeah. was before, which is going to change so, so much. All it being the attacker, Sagan being the finisher. I love it. I love the duo. It's it's just a fantastic signing because, yeah, as you said, complementary riding styles. And uh, yeah, as you say, it just takes so much pressure off Sagan. He's not going to be the only one in the group with everyone looking at him. And Daniel Loss is, is really good, but he's not looked at as a proper threat, I don't think. The same way Niels Pollock will be looked at. And Oss's role is more just to bring back attacks, etc. Although he did attack on Milano San Remo, whether that was the right idea or not. Um, who knows? But I think it's a pretty strong team. Um, maybe Selig or Schwarzman are missing, or Schillinger might be in there as well. Probably uh, one or two of those will be in the team. Um, and I think, yeah, I, I expect them to be winning one of those races. And I think, I, I don't think Wild Van or, or Van der Poel are going to win Paru Bay. I think it's going to be uh, someone from Bora Hansgrohe. But maybe I've already. Jordi Meus. Yeah, Jordi <laughs> Meus, maybe. I think Meus wouldn't be surprised. Benji, it would not surprise me if in one of these big cobbled races or these Belgian classics that there will be a group that has Os, Meus, Sagan, and Pollitt in it. And we're like, what the fuck? Why is there a green quick step team here? <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, it's. It's not beyond the realms of possibility. It's entirely possible, as my co- podcast colleague Joe Rogan would say. Otherwise, for say like the, uh, I don't know what his program is exactly, Ackerman, but he usually cleans up a couple of those Belgian uh, races, Benji, like um, Brussels Cycling Classic or Daniel Lewis Cursor or Brenner Coxie the Classic, whatever they're called. Um, Eschborn Frankfurt, their home race. I think the only world tour level race in Germany. Ackermann will probably be going to that as well. That's a sprinter's delight. Either Christoph or Ackermann do well there. But what about what about specifically Tour of Flanders and Roubaix, Benji? Would you change the team from anything we've said? I would not. I think that I think we're kind of on or I underrated Bullet's healing ability earlier on this episode when I said he's better at the likes of Roubaix because I'm pretty sure he can get over. Tour of Flanders backs quite well as well. And he's also got a bit of a sprint to finish it off. But I think it really comes down to the fact that that duo is, is going to be deadly in those two races. And I don't think it's going to matter which of the two it is. I think that both of these teams are fitting on both terrains and that there shouldn't be too much change on which riders you bring to which of the races. I'm really curious what someone like Shockman would do at the Tour of Flanders. I would no. love to see that. <laughs> He came 98 <laughs> in his oh, only fuck. Flanders. Yeah, but he, that, that's at the end of a long, a weird season and he's done the World Champs in the edge. So I don't I, don't I tried. <laughs> yeah. I see him more as a Strata guy, which is not a hot take. He's yep. podium Strata before. Um, so for Strata, again, Strata, they should have a pretty strong team. Now that might be a bit early for Sagan, but yeah, Sharkman should be the leader at Strata, I think. And... Kamner, I'd like to see how Kamner goes at Strata. I'm not sure whether they're going to send him. I think he's, I think he's a good aggressive rider that can go long or good TT ability. I'd like to see him in that team too. Postal Berger is just very all round strong, good in crosswinds, underrated rider as well. Um, so he could pretty much make up be in any team. He's the Luke Rowe of Bora. Um, <laughs> Milano San Remo Benji, the one that has always gotten away from Sagan. Do you think they're changing it up this year or is it going to be just the same as usual? Just Sagan, like Sagan's not going to, he's not going to be able to follow Al Philippe, right? No way. No, but Sharkman would. And I think that's also the combination I'd send I don't this. think Sharkman Sagan could for the, uh, I think he can on a good day. If uh, he rides no in the same. Man, look, two years ago, Bas Country, he, he basically rode away from everybody the last kilometer every time. I really That's, believe that Sharkman is good enough to follow in good form. It's different, it's different, though. It's different. It's like he's a good – he's like what uh, – who is it that was describing? Schoens was saying to us about how he gets better as the race gets longer and harder and he doesn't have that really top, top end punch. That's what – I don't think Sharkman has that flesh – and just top level punch 
like the same way that Ala Philippe Walvana, mm-hmm. he or she Woods has. And I don't I just don't think for that reason that he can follow on Poggio because it's not a particularly difficult race for them. Now if it was, I know. If, if yeah, <laughs> if it was Olympics road race that had fifteen Poggios, I'd think I'd yep. say I'd say differently. But yep. I think yeah, that, that's just my view of Shuckman. And again, that's a good mm-hmm. someone write that down. That's probably the first time we've disagreed in a couple of episodes, a couple <laughs> of weeks. So you, you think they're gonna ride half a Shuckman and then have Sagan sit in the group behind him. I would. I would try that for certain. And I think that I'm going to keep my hot takes for later on this episode. Okay. <laughs> but I think I've got a Milano San Remo related hot take coming Woof. in pretty soon. Woof. All right. Okay, moving on to the Ardennes. Speaking of Shuckman, who I just underrated uh, in respect to Milano San Remo, <laughs> this is where he will shine. I think Amstel Gold, Liege, not flesh, because I don't think he has the punch. Um, but Amstel Gold the Age as well, I think will be really good. Also, I mean, Kelderman was supposed to do them as well. Hopefully he's fine. I would love to see him there in a strong outfit at Bora. Uh, I'm not sure what Buchmann's program is, Benji. We're a fair way into this pod, and I have, I've barely mentioned the man. Um, I think he's just doing a, a pure GC preparation, like UAE Tour Terreno, Tour of the Alps, then yep. Giro. So we won't see him at, the, at the, uh, any of the classics. But I'd like to see them take a couple of the take take a cut one or both of the um the cross discipline boys they often uh pass are here just to see how they go in those races. I mean it's gonna be difficult for them, but who knows? Just take them, see how they go. Again, Kemner. Um I guess it's it's all out for Shuckland, right, Benji. Is there there's no other really option for them? I think they can actually do quite well with quite a bunch of riders okay. on those kind of terrains. Oh, bro, Shockman. I, um, uh, Shockman, first of all, would be my leader, to be clear. Yep. And I think he also has a chance of podiuming La Flesh. He already got a fifth place in that in 2019. So he's also kind of explosive. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, when it comes to like... Uh, other riders in the team, Groschartner could definitely be part of that. I um, believe Groschartner is just more interested in one week yeah. races and trying his stuff in a Grand Tour at some point. He tried it at La Vuelta last year. He was actually not that terrible in La Vuelta, looking back at it, when it comes to what we could have expected beforehand from the likes of a Groschartner. I believe he's an underrated rider because of the fact that his first to the France he did, he was pretty poor, just terrible, honestly. And... In one-week races, he's able to do really well. He's currently, while we are recording this, in Etoile de Bessage. And unfortunately, he crashed. Otherwise, he would have been a yeah, favorite, of course. Um, I think that Groschartner would fit in that team for certain, but they've got so many riders that fit there. Matteo Fabro, the man got 12 oh, in a million. Yeah, yeah. Put him in the team. Yeah. Like, the last stage of Tireno, I think, the one match of Vanderpool won, he was basically one of the MVPs of that that stage and shelling yeah it is shelling definitely that stage with wellens in the vuelta certainly fits on these kind of terrains and deserves to be in that team but you can name so many riders of this team for that because like akemna why would you not send them to this i think in a race like lbl akemna could play a good role Conrad, of course, the man got top 10s in these kind of races already i think a top five at some point as well in lbl a few years ago uh yeah i think they've got a really strong team do you think the time is over where we are able to put sagan into a, a possibility of doing well at these races because like in in his prime years we would have put him down as a potential guy that could hang on and try and finish off an amstel but i don't think he's remotely able to do that anymore well it's it's a moot point because he i think he wants to do cobbled classics milano san yep. Torreno. And then Roubaix, then straight in, and then uh, I think it takes nearly a month off. Then Giro to a double, so there is no time for him to do to do the Ardennes. One of the big things that, I, and I plan on writing a big article about it, is why you know you know Peter Sagan has never done long, uh, the age best on the age Benji. Twenty five year old, two thousand and eleven to two thousand and fourteen, Peter Sagan, no race suited him more than the age best on the age. If you go back and look at the races where he would win uphill, uphill sprints, and I'm not just talking like he got over the hill and then won the sprint afterwards. He won uphill sprints. 
against Cadell Evans, Crozgel, Joaquin Rodriguez, Nibali in 2012-2013 region. Guys who've won Liège and won on Motohui. And he's never done Liège best on Liège. And it's just crazy to me. I, th- I think he would have he would have won two, minimum. Minimum. And I think there's been so much focus on San Remo. Maybe it means more to him. But I think that's just a big gap in his Palmares that... Um, May, and I'm sure someone's going to comment down below a scheduling reason that there'll be, it just doesn't, you just can't do it all. You can't do every monument and the Tour de France every year although, and then go to Tour of California, et cetera. But that's always been a shame to me. I've had that on my mind for a while, Benji. Sorry, I had to get that off my chest. But to your point, <laughs> no. I mean, I say no, but I, I, I wouldn't be COVID aside. I wouldn't be surprised, Ben. You look at the stage. You look at the stage he won at the Giro. Like, I don't. If he did it, I'd be like, oh, okay, it makes sense. He just rode away from everyone on uh, La Redoute or whatever, whatever climb it was. Like, it's not something I'd expect, but it's Peter Sagan. Now, I, I don't expect it, and he's not doing it, so it's a moot point. But yeah, why do you, do you just see his hill climbing not at the same level anymore? Yeah, I believe is he's significantly worse in that at the moment than he was before. And I don't believe he's got the capabilities of doing well at these races anymore. I think in the past, if you put him in that in 2013, he would probably be able to do it properly. But at this very moment, I believe his sprint is worse. I believe his hill, hills are worse. I believe his cobbles are still relatively on point, but he doesn't seem to be... Yeah, he doesn't seem to be as as active in the peloton anymore as in if we see a split it's one of the riders that is sometimes missing the split and if that happens then then it then yeah then it's not great but i think that's why the addition of paul it will help him a lot because once he's missing those splits you've got someone else there and also he can avoid missing splits because of the likes of paul it so yeah i think that will change a lot when it comes to cover race i don't think it's going to happen too much in his sprinting and his hill business personally I um, I just don't feel like Sagan is too hyped to, cy- to do cycling anymore when I see him on his bike sometimes. And perhaps this is something I'm just imagining, but it wouldn't surprise me if we're, we're 2023, the Bora contract is gone and Sagan retires. It would not surprise me at all. I'm pretty sure his contract expires at the end of this year. I'm not sure if it's extended. <laughs> That's per, per PCS, maybe incorrect. We'll get to that at the end. Onto the Giro squad, it's Emmanuel Buchmann is going to the Giro. Correct decision. Obviously, I'd send him to the Giro, not the Tour. Giro parkour suits him much more. I think his TT, it's just, it's not great. And also, he doesn't have the punch on, say, Britannia as well. He'd be losing. It's not just that he'd be losing bonus seconds. I think he'd be getting gapped sometimes on these punchy finishes to Pogaccio and Roglic uh, and even Geraint Thomas if he's on form. So Giro, I think, suits him much more. I really like him for a podium there if he's back and um, recovered from that crash and then training fine. I think, I think Bookman there, I like him more than Lander. Borkman, I think I really like him for a podium there. Um, who they'll send with him, I'm not sure entirely. I know that, well, Sagan, sorry, I do know. Sagan is going, supposed to go to Giro. <laughs> now, I don't, Ackerman is going to the Tour. So who, who else do you think they're sending to the Giro, Benji? And, and what sort of team would you put around Bookman? Does he need too much help? I would put help around him. He's a rider that definitely deserves the support. He's been pretty great in his lead up to Walter Tour de France last year. And unfortunately, the crash in Dauphiné pretty much bottled that entire Tour de France, which is, yeah, not really representative of what Buchmann can do. So if he's well prepared, out of injury trouble, then he can perform really well. Tour de France 2019 is an example of that. Buchmann is a better version of of Kreisweg, in my opinion, because Buchmann can actually accelerate it tiny bits faster than Kreisweg. Not amazing, but they're like very similar riders. Kreisweg is a bit better when it comes to time trial. Buchmann is, in my honest opinion, a better climber. So, yeah, I think that Buchmann can be very good at the Giro. And if the parkour is what it's rumored right now, which is a first time trial on day one and a last time trial on the last day, then I could see him. I could see him definitely podium, the podiuming the Giro, and yeah, he'd even have an opportunity of winning it if he's got a solid team surrounding him. I and think it's I think it's his best Landon, chance. It's his best chance of winning a Grand Tour 
and it seems Certainly. like Benji seems like they're sending the the boys with him. Conrad, Schelling. I'm oh, sorry, not Schelling. Conrad definitely. I think he's going. Fabro is going. I would also send Schelling. So and Groschartner. So Groschartner, Fabro, Conrad. That is quite nice as support yep. for Buchmann on that parkour, don't you think? I think that Grosher seems to be filling in the gap that Mulberry was leaving a tiny yeah. bit for for uh, your boy uh, Buchmann here. So I believe that's a very strong team surrounding him and it's going to be one of the better teams in the climbs if they're on the level that Grosher was in La Vuelta, Faber was in the Giro and in the Tireno race he rode. Conrad was... Did he ride a good race last year, Conrad? Yeah, the Giro, why not? If Giro, he's he at was, that level. No, but... Giro, he made every selection. Giro, he was making the selection, not getting dropped by yeah. too much. Perfectly good as a domestique for Brooklyn. And then Sagan exactly. will go and look after himself. Um, I'm pretty Chiclamino much. Hunt. Yeah, and maybe they take uh, Schwarzman or, or Burkhard or Schilling, I don't know, maybe one or, or so yeah. to help him. Um, Question Did they yes. pay him again, Giro? Or do you think they that he no, decided to go and solve this time around? Definitely not. Because then yeah. he said it was a waste of money, didn't he? After the Shiro, he said it was out of, <laughs> it wasn't his, no, he said it was. It wasn't his decision in the first place, and it wasn't a great idea. So I doubt, I mean, I doubt they did it again. <laughs> I, mean, I honestly kind of like it. <laughs> I genuinely kind of like it. I think if you're Sagan, just if it's your last year or last few years, just go to as many races as possible. Do the Valverde thing where you're never probably the best guy for the race on paper, except for maybe flesh in 2018 or something and just go to as many as possible if you're in the select group as many times throughout the year you know luck will go your way and you get wins rather than uh fewer races so that's the Giro squad very nice team i think bookman podium lock uh if all goes to plan and peter sagan taking a stage win tour de france team i think has to be it's going to be ackerman and it's going to be sprint focused i think ackerman is promised the tour I think they have to send him. Kemner, Kemner, I think, I don't know. I think my view is I would send Kemner and go all in on him for GC because I think he is, he's young, <laughs> he's got the TT, and I'm incredibly biased. I'm incredibly biased because he's my boy. <laughs> and But there's also some objectivity to it. I think if he fits the style of race, I think he does have some punch. I think you saw him when he attacked in stage 14 out of the blue uh, into the one song Crunt Anderson won. It had the blue candy bangs attacked on one of those rises. Yeah, I just I just like them to give him a chance at GC. I think he's got way more upside than Kelderman has. Kelderman's not podiuming the Tour de France, injury aside. It's not happening. Whereas Kemner probably won't either, but at least he gets the experience. And then next year, Maybe Roglic is taking a step back. Maybe Pogac is doing uh, zero well to double. Maybe, probably not, but <laughs> it's never going to be easy. But you just give him the experience. Um, so I would do that, and I would send Sharkman too to go for yellow on stage two as well. Yes. Um, and it, what, what's your thoughts on that, Benji? You, you think Kelderman, I'm completely underrating? I believe they should send the Trident, which is uh, the Bora Trident at this point is Sharkman. <laughs> Kemna <laughs> Kelderman. I believe Kelderman is perhaps a bit underrated in your eyes, but I also think he can't do what... I think I recall an article where he said he wanted to get a podium at the Tour de France. I'm not 100% sure. If that was the case, then I believe that it's going to be tough. His time trial is good, which is important on this yeah. on this terrain. So it's going to be very similar to the Giro in that sense. The Giro of 2020, that is. And... That might help him. He's also pretty good at steeper sections. I think Kellerman would, would be able to get into the top five of, of the tour, to be honest. But I also think that... Well, let's see. We've got... Hilly finishes in fast. There's barely any climbing in the first two weeks. There's like one or two mountain stages, of which Tini is one of them, which is not the biggest. As in, it's doable for someone that can decently climb to stay within a certain region. What if Sharkman does what Wout van Aert is meant to do in your eyes? Well, what exactly. Sharkman... Yeah, exactly. Like Sharkman, got a, he's got a very nice TT and yeah, punchy. I, well, yeah, that's a great point. Why not keep them all up there? 
what if Bora Hans, maybe your trident that you said is half a joke is not a joke. And yeah, I know. I think they're a really good trio. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know if they're actually planning on sending Shakran because they also want to have a sprint train for Ackerman as well. Where there's enough space on the team. Hopefully Kelderman's injury doesn't rule him out. But yeah, that, that's a nice, that's a nice trio. And then they, they'll obviously not really have any space for domestiques. Um, I think they probably have to take Oss and yeah, the sprint train basically for Ackerman as well. Um, Schillinger, Rudiger Selig and, and co. Maybe Marcus Burkhardt as well, experienced German. But Ackerman, Benja, we just spoke about the GC. Maybe we'll leave our predictions to the end. But what about Ackerman? Do you, Damar will be going. Ewan will be going. Bennett will be going. What do you see for Ackerman at this, this year's Tour de France? I think if he sprints like 2020, it's going to be tough to take home a Tour de France stage win. If he sprints like 2019, he can take two stage wins. So it will depend on what level he comes towards the 2021 season. We don't know that yet. Well, we know he was terrible at the races he's done so far. Was that Bessage that he's at? I actually don't know it by heart. Um, yes, it is Bessage. He was pretty terrible at um, the only flat stage we had so far. But then again, we can't really specify that because uh, everybody crashed. <laughs> so that's horrible. Um, yeah, Ackermann. I. I'm not sure, but I don't 100% believe in the Ackermann story anymore. No, and I, I hope that I he can find it. his form back. But no, yeah. uh, he's got two Grand Tour stage wins. Uh, sorry, the Giro, two of the Welter, no two of the France stage wins. But I think I think it's been very difficult for him, especially with Wild and Art chasing Green. It's just another guy in the way. Um, yeah. it's just another rider contesting all the sprints. It's just so competitive, and it's going to be hard for him. I think in this year's tour, but he just, he still deserves a chance. I think he deserves a chance to go to the tour. Yep. And it's not Certainly. like Sagan didn't, Sagan will be going, Sagan didn't win. It actually is good for Sagan with Ackerman going, Benji, because he can go stage hunting, right? Like, surely that's what they will do. They'll have Ackerman for the bunch sprints. Maybe depending on how he goes, they'll have stage one is kind of in between Sagan and like, do you go Sagan or Ackerman? Actually, maybe it's not so simple, Benji. <laughs> Which one do you go for in stage one? Probably Ackerman, to be honest. But then it gives Sagan some freedom, right? To go stage hunting in medium mountain or just those long, like a long 200K nothing day. I don't know. I think that we've seen already that Sagan can do well in a uh, in a lead out role as well, if necessary, for someone like Ackerman. We saw in the smaller races. Um, do I believe that they're going to be? Mm, I think Ackerman is going to be for the straight up flat sprints, and anything with a hill is going to be Sagan. <laughs> and I think stage one is indeed an in betweener, but I think, oh, it's so hard, really, <laughs> because like. Ackermann has done well on hilly finishes as well in like Bologna two years ago. It, it, where he it won should, that, be, where he it should be Ackermann. Yeah. It should be him. Like if he's actually in good form, he should be the guy for that sprint, not Sagan. Um, but especially like modern, I don't know. It's tough to say. If Ackermann's not the guy for that stage one sprint, then the question is like, why are you taking him? If he Because he should be able to contest that sort of sprint. Uh, but anyway, moving on to the Vuelta. Just quickly, Benji, you don't think they're taking Zweihoff or Palza to either of the Grand Tours? I have no clue what to, what to expect from these, though. So it's really difficult to like calculate what rider they are or what <laughs> team they're going to fit in or what they can do. So I think we're going to see that in the first races they ride. And I think throughout the recaps of the races we're going to be doing throughout the season, we're going to start to see a bit of a pattern in what they do and then we can say if they're going to be in a Grand Tour or not. But now it's literally impossible for me to do that, to be honest. We need data for that. Zvihov is doing the Giro, according to PCS. That makes sense out of the two of them. He's the mountain biker. He's got more experience on the bike. Uh, he's doing UAE Tour before, so we're going to have a look at him at the end of February, yep. see how he goes there. Uh, but as I said, the Germans are very hyped on these two guys. They, they say it's, they're no joke, especially Zvihov sooner than Palzer because he's got that biking experience. I think Palzer, yeah, I mean, you can't be sending him to a Grand Tour, I think, when he's he got his first road bike delivered to him last year, right? So 
um, or in the mail in, in December. So maybe next year for the Grand Tours. All right, onto the Vuelta, Benji. I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the Vuelta Parkour looks like. I don't. It, it depends. Has, has, is Ackerman in good form? Maybe Ackerman's crashed. Is Kelderman coming back from his injury? And yeah. he's missed And he's missed the Tour de France, so they have to send him to the Vuelta, and he has to do a delayed, delayed preparation. That's what I think might happen in reality. Do are there are there five finishes that suit Sharkman? I have no idea. Is is Gross starting to get another opportunity at GC or Conrad? I mean, you tell me because I really don't have a read on it. I put Gross Schartner in there for GC because he's going to the um, Giro, and you've got that double is the easiest to do. Obviously, Giro Vuelta is better than Giro Tour and Tour Vuelta because there's more months in between, so you can prep better for those and be in better form for those. I think Groschana can come back in the Vuelta. Perhaps Buchmann, if his goal is not reached at the Giro, or even if his goal is reached at the Giro, he might say, well, I've got half a season to go. What now? So La Vuelta could fit there, and that goes for quite a bunch of riders that are going to the Giro. But I'd say YOLO takes again to all three Grand Tours, because why the hell not? (laughs) People want to see it, and I want to see it. So if if he wants to ride his bike, then give it to him and send him to all three Grand Tours, you know? Jordi Mayus, Jordi Mayus has to go to the Welter. He has to go. Youngsters, yeah. He is telling like. Yeah, I yeah, think Mayus. I think Mayus can win a yeah. stage. I think that's far fetched at the moment, but if we see more of him, then it's possible. But we're not at the hot take section, mate. Come on, keep no, no, it calm. No. In, in the, in the, when you when you look at the when you look in the history of the Welter, some of the sprint stages, and if you got a if you're half decent at getting over a climb, yeah. he's a style of rider who can win a welter stage, even when he's not even in the top 10 sprinters in the world, um, just by being in the right place at the right time, like Magnus Court or um, who was the guy that won two in previous years, Benji, when it was like literally punchers coming third and fourth on pancake flat stages. I mean, sometimes the welter's had a comically bad. Um, was it Danny Mertman? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> look, go and look up when he won the world stage. It was Yanni Mearsman. Yeah. Jesus. Anyway, I, I don't I honestly don't know Benji, and I think it, this is a team that's impossible to say who will go because it will be entirely dependent on how the Giro goes, how the Tour goes, how Kelderman goes with his injury, how Sagan comes back from COVID, and if, if all of that's fine, everyone does the program they were supposed to do. I, I'll probably get Camner to do the Welter as well. <laughs> And stuff. Well, no. What's wrong with the tour? Why not? Pagacha. We should rise every single race as leader. Pagacha. Pagacha's doing more race days. Pagacha's doing tour well to double. Roglic did tour well to double. Like, if he wants to do it, I send him. Um, So I don't think that's far fetched. And then Ackerman, maybe if he wants to do the double as well. I don't know. They got a lot of talent. I think Shuckman don't send to the Welter. I've changed my mind. Send him to Lombardia to get revenge. Uh, but now let's get to our hot takes, Benji, for Bora Hansgrohe, one of my favorite teams. My hot take is that Bora Hansgrohe win a monument and it's not going to be Peter Sagan or Shuckman. No, sorry. It might be Shuckman at Lombardia. I want that to count. Um, yeah, I think they're going to win a monument and they're going to top three two monuments three monuments I think they're going to top three three monuments and win one that's my first hot take now you can do your first hot take Sharkman's going to win Milano San Remo I mean that fits with my hot take but I disagree strongly (laughs) (laughs) I'll, I'll take it if it happens okay I think Jordi Mayus wins a Vuelta stage. I think Sagan goes winless. I think <laughs> Buchmann tops threes the Giro. That might even not even be a hot take. I think Kamna yeah, top fives the Tour. I think um, what else? I'm getting out of control here. I think Ben Zvihoff does a Rowan Dennis and drops everybody off his wheel except Buchmann to win Buchmann the Giro in the last mountain stage. <laughs> Come on, these are some good hot takes. 
<laughs> Genius. I think my hot take right now is going to be that uh, I think Paulit is going to podium Tour of Flanders. I think I okay Tour of Flanders. I would pick Roubaix, but I guess that's not a hot take. I think Flanders. That is a hot take from Benji. Podium Flanders for Paulit. Damn. But okay. he can sprint in the second group and win the sprint in the second group. That's my oh, take. Okay, Christoph style, right in. Okay, well, that, that's our hot takes of Bora Hansgrohe. Comment yours below or hit us up on Twitter uh, in the replies under the tweet we put out on the Lantern Rich Luckin Podcast Twitter handle for the Bora podcast. Whether you think I've lost the plot, maybe I have. I am a bit biased with Bora. They're one of my, they're from my favorite team, to be honest. Um, but don't tell me on that. And, but just before we close off, we might want to talk about the transfers they've got coming out or contracts that are expiring at the end of this year according to PCS it's a lot Benji so the Zweihoff's on a one year deal a bit strange um, Sagan Buchmann Ackermann Conrad Os Burkhardt Kemner Bodnar Selig Schillinger Eva Schelling Martin Lars Eric Basker Michael Schwarzman Juraj Sagan Matteo Fabro Patrick Gamper all out of contract that's that's like the core of their team, right? Except for Shabby Yeah. So I would not re sign the following. Eric Oof. Barshka. Yeah. I would also skip out on Schillinger. I would skip out on Conrad. I think we're gonna end up being at a point where Borghard and Bodnar is gonna are gonna be too far in their career to perform too well at top levels. And perhaps Burkhardt in the likes of Paris Roubaix can play a role. Uh, I think those are going to reach the end of their career pretty soon. They're going to need a replacement for Zelig pretty soon. Not perhaps not this one yet. He could go into another contract, but I don't think they'll they'll need him too much. I think Zwihoff is going to stay on the team. I think he's going to perform well. I believe in this in this change. Patrick Gamper hasn't shown too much yet. If he doesn't this year, he should go out of the team. And obviously, Ackermann and Buchmann should be resigned. Kemna as well, because Kemna is the future of their GC as well. I'm Why not should... saying that he's on the level of Buchmann when it comes to climbing right now, but I do believe he's the future of their GC team. Edis Kelling resign as well. Schwartzman, I would not resign. Why? Why should they resign Buchmann? He's won one World Tour race, a stage in past country, never podium the Grand Tour. Well, he will by then. 28, 28 years old. No, I, I'm just I'm just posing the question. Is it because you think he, he's better than that and he actually is a, a genuine yeah. podium candidate for it and you have to have at least one of those riders on your team? He's currently in the years of his career where he's at his peak. I believe at the end of this year, he'll still have a good two, three years at that top level of his strength. I believe that his fourth at the Tour de France in 2019 he certainly showed that he's worth it to be one of the GC leaders of a World Tour squad. And I think that in this Giro, he's one of the favorites for a podium, if not more. I would not re-sign Sagan. Um, and I, I think very hard about Ackerman too, depending on how this year goes as well. I think Kamner, obviously Kamner needs to get a seven-figure contract minimum. Um, <laughs> but it's your again, right? That's right. Oh, it's again as well. Oh, yeah, of course. But it's both the thing Sagan's. about Sagan is like, do you have the feeling that Sagan, how he's riding right now in the peloton, is horribly enjoying cycling? Or you feel like he's kind of done with it? I don't know. I, I have no idea. Um, I, he's definitely like sick of the media and stuff and talking to people, but that's perfectly rational because. Um, if I was him, I'd also be sick of that. It'd be incredibly boring for 10 years straight, having to answer the same questions every day. I don't think, Are being a, as I said before, being a pro rider during COVID sounds terrible. It's worse. It'd be just, yeah, just be terrible. Um, so that's not helping. But I don't know. I don't know his personal circumstances. If I had to guess, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd probably think he's not having a great time uh, or, or not. He doesn't have that joie de vivre that he might have had in years past. That being said, whether that's actually affected his training in a, um, in a real way or the cases doing on the bike, etc., 
or his actual mindset in races. I haven't seen any real evidence of that, to be honest. I mean, he did come top five in a lot of Tour de France sprints and Vuelta sprints. It's not exactly like he was. It's not like Cavendish in Shell de Prez or wherever being brought up the front and then putting on his brakes because he didn't like all the people around him anymore. Like, I haven't seen anything like that from Sagan. So I think news of his death is grossly overestimated, but also I don't expect him to be cleaning up anything either. I think it's just been a sort of steady decline year on year from 2017 onwards. And that's why I wouldn't be signing, re-signing him to whatever contract he's on right now. Um, and the problem is regarding that contract as well, that what do you do after this? He's not worth the money that is on his contract. Yeah, looking four at his or five million. Last year. Marketing wise, perhaps, I don't know what the revenue of marketing for Sagan is, but I'm pretty sure it's a lot, even still at this point. But all in all, I do believe that what you what will you do like you either offer him a lower contract which he might say no to but then what team is going to offer him that israel perhaps that guy would literally donate a fortune to have a ride like again <laughs> yeah, on yeah. there as well so yeah perhaps again we'll be going to israel in a year <laughs> i think the one thing is the beauty of bora Hansgrohe for him is it's a very strong team and it needs to be but also the beauty of peter sagan is he's a rider that's getting paid the most in the world probably the last five years but he doesn't need much help nor demand it there's not often like Sagan almost I remember Benji in the in the tour there was a lot of riders who I think would have made their teammates keep chasing Damar no Damar Bennett up the road or keep sorry or keeping the gap to Bennett and he told them nah don't worry guys just lay off it now don't don't bury yourselves for this it's no point and I think a lot of other riders of his quality and with his Palmares would have rode, made them work till they were into the ground. So I don't think he's that demanding of team leadership really uh, either. So it's not like he's, he's not really, a, he's not a prima donna at all in that sense. Uh, so that's why he is easier to keep around because he's happy to look after himself in sprints mostly. In fact, you might even prefer that. That being said, it all depends on the contract. It all depends on how whether they think there's a marketing benefit. I don't know the ins and outs of that. Only they really know that and can do that cost-benefit analysis. I just think €5 million Euro can go a long way and get you a lot of wins if you pick the right riders. I mean, Mark here, she's on one mil. Here, she's Shuckman plus <laughs> another rider on a mil. For um, the Ardennes is pretty good. <laughs> be a pretty good team. And it'd be a pretty good team in the tour hunting stages too. So I think, yeah, it's a big contract. He, he did earn it, uh, but I think they should do what Ineos did with Froome and not compete with, say, in his rough startup nation. <laughs> no, not ditch him, but say, hey, we're happy to, no, we're happy to pay you 1.5 to, that's reflective of your, your actual results in the last two years. Mm -hmm. If yep. you, you still have a big bonus for a Twitter print stage win, but not getting the big one. But who knows? I agree. I think you've convinced me on Bookman, and I think Cam is the future. But that's the end of our Bora Hounds Grower 2021 preview. Probably, I think, our most fulsome one. I think they're really top three strongest team in the world all around. Almost any race on the calendar, they, they have someone that can win that race. There's very few teams that can actually say that. They could win any of the monuments. They could win any stage of any of the Grand Tours, except maybe a pure mountain stage where Pagatra and Co are there. And I think the only weakness is GC leadership for now. But we'll see how Zlihoff, Kemner and Palza go this year, as well as Buchmann in the Giro. Thanks for listening, as always. And we'll see you in the next one. Ciao.